Hello and welcome to, I guess, episode four of the Fiberglass Boat Build Project. I started out by working on the pedestal for the seat uh, in, in this episode. It was all about getting the pedestal that was the right the right height, and that actually took some work. There aren't that many places that sell them uh, that small. I think this one's only about a foot a foot high, um, and I was pretty happy to go for one that was fixed height rather than variable because I wanted it to be quite low and not get up too high too, too high up at the side of the boat. You can see when it's test fit there that um, that it sits towards the back of the boat in that driving position, but I needed to test fit it with an engine. This is obviously not the engine that I plan to use on this boat. This is a, a very, very small old mariner that we have from a tender on an old boat that my dad owned. So what I did was, you can see a little bit of ply there. That's that's the actual end length of the 25 horsepower outboard that I have on the other boat. So what I've done is, I've just measured out the length from the transom to the end of the tiller, taped on, a, on a, an attachment there, and that helped me just to work out you know, roughly where the clearance would be. We then jumped forward and started to work on the electrics. You can see my grandfather here. So um, so he's got a lot of electrical experience. I've got very little, so he came in and helped me. So this is us mounting the lights, drilling the holes, drilling in the front deck. Really had to, had to make some smart decisions here because you get very nervous drilling holes in the freshly painted hull. But they do have to go in there, so we started out by test fitting the lights, we got them in the right place, put the, you can see there it's, it fits in quite nicely and then obviously the the bolt went through as well. This is for the, the depth sounder that went in and then while we were, I was waiting for my grandfather to go and pick up some more equipment, uh, Sailing Yak, Nick and I, he came back and, and actually helped me out here to add the rubber interior trim to go right around the inside of the boat because it's something that I've been meaning to do and I but I couldn't really do till after obviously all the paint had hardened sufficiently so we're using liquid nails here squeezing it on and then literally just ripping the 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 ridge up over the the lip of the the deck so it ended up working quite well it's dried very very hard but it was certainly a, a difficult task getting it to wedge up in that in that over that gap was was very very difficult you can see there even actually getting the glue out of the liquid nails liquid nails squeeze tube was incredibly difficult it was it was very hard to get out but over a period of about 10 minutes we managed to get around most of the boat which was great and then my grandfather arrived back and we got to to soldering shortly after So basically we run from the battery through to the switchboard and we've got all the positive terminals that, that, um, that are all accessible just behind the, the floor and, um, and then the negatives run into the switch and that's what connects the, connects the connection. We used heat shrink on all of the cables so that we got a nice watertight connection. I've seen quite a few people just use electrical tape which you probably could do in most settings but this is probably better practice, so it made sense. I got pretty good at, at, at using the, the soldering iron by, by the end of this project. Never got particularly clean so, uh, solds prior to this, but it ended up working. We are currently installing the LED strip lighting, which is going well, isn't it? Yeah. And all those wires will be hidden away very shortly. Keeping the lights on while we stick them up was really useful. It meant that we were able to get them in an ideal position so that the light reflected down the sides of the white walls. It made it really easy to see. Didn't quite make as much progress as I wanted today, but we did finish a few key milestones. Basically, all the electrics are done and cleaned up, which is great. And the other thing I'm excited about is I've got the rubber on the internal uh, rubber tubing right around it. So, have a look at how it works. So this is the rubber, it sort of runs right around. I'm really happy with how that looks, it looks awesome. And then obviously, battery's wired up, right over to here. There's a little bit of a mess there, but that's all right. And then this, this box, which I made from scratch actually. So that mounts there when there's a flat floor there. So it fits perfectly in that, in that space. And then when you flick a switch, 
There's the nav lights going on and off. And I've also got, which I'm really happy about, is this internal lighting here, which works incredibly well for, literally it's like LED lighting the whole interior of the boat. Works super effectively. In fact, I'll try that in the dark now. So that's just the garage light. And that's going to be pretty cool. I couldn't really be happier with how this light ended up. It it really sets sets the tone for the boat. I've always found night fishing difficult in the tinny without having any solid lights in there. So it was important to me that we added this as an addition. Strip lighting is really cheap, so it was worth playing with. Right. So annoying. Particularly annoying because I knew that I had to have the boat out in the open, um, out, outside of the garage, so I could do this on the inside. The problem with doing that, more so for lighting than anything else, the problem with doing that was obviously the electrical switchboard was still, uh, still very much open, so I didn't want to have the boat out in the rain throughout this process. But it all ended up okay, so I, I cut out all of the carpet first and then glued it down and then I, it was very important that we bolted the seat down to the floor obviously before it was installed in the boat because I had to attach the nut from the underside. So we, we braced it with a couple of extra sheets of ply under the floor, ran the bolts right through in the ideal position which I'd already marked out and then it just came down to bolting them all in. Once the, once the floor went into the boat, it was, it was a pretty simple matter of just cutting the, the carpet out around those, those small holes in the very back of the hull. Very simple. All the carpet was all pre-glued, so that worked out really, really well. And then, yeah, got in, test fit, took a few photos, really, really happy with it. This edge here just had to be glued down just to keep it all solid. That was the only edge that I hadn't done. I wanted to leave a bit of bit of room there, so just important to compress that right down with the spray glue. When you see the floor in the boat with the carpet on it, the seat bolted in, you sort of feel like you're really nearing the end of the project, which is great. Next was to work on the, the plates for the transom. These are just sheets of ply that are coated in epoxy. We used the, the real drill, the legitimate drill, so the holes here would be would be fairly nice. These would be exposed, so it was, especially to the water, so it was important that we didn't have leave it too rough, and also it was very important that we filled them with silicon because I did not want, want water to follow in through the holes or in alongside the bolts and then into the transom. Started with small draw bits and then got big, progressively bigger to the point where we, we had them the width we needed them, just so we didn't chip out too much fiberglass. You see a silicon sort of falling through. And that's the interior plate. The boat didn't have an, 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 a, boat, a plate on the inside of the boat originally. It, um, it only had the plate on the outside. Uh, I thought it, that didn't really make sense because it was putting these big sort of cut marks into the fiberglass on the inside. So we just sort of made that one out of a, a just a nice rectangular piece and it worked really well. had to get the carpet all sorted. So I wanted to do the vertical piece that runs between the two, the two decks, the lower deck and the upper deck. So I did this by actually making a little bit of a template out of paper, as you can see on the right hand side there, that shows the curvature of the side of the boat. So I used that to cut a nice little edge into the carpet, get it the right shape, 
clamp it all in, make sure it worked, cut out an edge for the cables to run through, and then glue it on. The trick here is to apply glue to both surfaces, let it start to get tacky or sticky, and then apply it, and it has a really nice hold. I'd pre-cut the carpet for the top here. So what I did was I actually drew a couple of markings, as you can see in the center, and then on the left-hand side, just so that after I sprayed the glue, when I placed the carpet down, you only really get one shot at doing that, and I didn't want to have to rip it up and do it again, and because you really got to apply more glue if you're doing that, so. So let it set, let it, let it, let it set, and then lay it down, cut out the centerpiece, apply the, the carpet and the latch to the front hatch, and it went in really nicely. I was originally going to put cleats on the back of the, the transom on either side, but the ones that I had just felt too big and a bit too too in the way. So I got these stainless steel fittings, just two screws all the way through, try to get them as straight as possible, and, and bolt them on. The eye at the front of the boat, again, just stainless steel fitting from a local marine shop, a chandlery really looks nice having that at the front of the boat rather than the old one which is just a bit rusted up. First time I've been able to winch the boat up in in what seems like months at this stage which is good. Now time to add the front cleat. This was a bit nerve-wracking. I was really really worried about drilling holes through the the nice new deck so I was very wary to get them as straight as possible um, and I think we did and then also get them into the support below the the deck or on the underside because you know that, that fiberglass is actually quite thin I certainly wouldn't want to walk on it so there was a single sheet of ply that ran right down well, it was like a stringer so I had to get right through the center of that but it worked quite well again applied some silicon to the inside of the holes and it went in nicely This was a real challenge, applying the, the rubber gunwale around the edges. Took two of us, took a heat gun, and we spent, gosh, it feels like a couple of hours working on this. It was injected with silicon and glue, and then, and basically like shove it on the sides of the boat. Difficult process, but um, one that you really wanted to heat it and stretch it so that as it contracted, as it cooled down, you'd be in a position where it sort of grabbed the boat rather than just sort of sat there or, or relied on the glue. At the ends, I just put a, a pilot screw in just to hold it there and then put the, the, rubber, the rubber fitting on the end and drilled them all the way through, added bolts. I thought I should probably test to make sure the bungs were actually watertight before I launched the boat in the water. I was really nervous about putting it in the water and then, well basically watching the whole thing just fall down the down the ramp and then into the water and, and never actually float. So 
just poured some water in there and actually left it in there for a couple of hours before letting it out. Pleased to announce that the bugs were completely watertight. Now, probably the heaviest job in the whole project. Get that, that big, angry, 25 horsepower Mercury Sea Pro onto the back of the boat. Anyone who's watching any of my other videos has seen this engine before, it's been on the tinny forever. We threw it on the boat to test fit, worked well. So then we added a couple of bolts in at the bottom of the boat just to, to get it all in nice and solid and keep it on the boat. I've seen too many horror YouTube videos where you end up in a situation where you take a hard corner and the engine somehow wasn't clamped on properly and finds its way off the back. So there's holes in the back of those, those boats for the engines for the reason. So adding bolts made sense. Using my new anchor line and threw that all onto the just a nice, nice tube that I managed to grab at the the Chandler where I bought the chain and rope. It's nice having new gear. Something I've been waiting to do for quite a while actually is add the stickers onto the switchboard. So just the three, the three initial switches used for now. There will be a build pump added. There'll also be the the anchor light added tested the sounder, worked brilliantly well, which is great, and added those little brackets, you can see those screw holes. Great project, worked well, super happy with it. Stay tuned for the big reveal.